Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Good morning, guys. It's Friday, March 27th. Welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Uh, we had some fishing to do last night and yesterday, so I wasn't able to get that report out yesterday, but today will be just fine. We, uh, here in North Texas, it's about 45 degrees this morning, so we've got a cold front that came through here. The weather's cooler, you know, the state is so big that it may be 30, 40 degrees warmer in San Antonio. We do have a situation now where we're getting um, a lot of sand bass showing up in the creeks around North Texas. When we're talking north of Dallas-Fort Worth, kind of the extreme north of North Texas. And uh, did catch some last night, and it was, it was, you know, right about, we're looking at early and late for the sand bass action around here. And I think in another week or two, as it gets warmer, perhaps, it's, it's hard to know for sure, but perhaps things will pick up and it'll get really into that normal zone of uh, sand bass action in the creeks here around Louisville Lake and Lake Ray Roberts and things like that. Ray Roberts less likely, but they, these things that feed into Louisville Lake are really flowing and if the flows have died down some earlier in the week. You know, we were at flood stage in some of the flows and now it's, it's slowed down some. Of course, all of our thoughts and go to the people in Oklahoma with, you know, it's very close to here, go to the people in Oklahoma with their um, tornadoes that happened and I read earlier in the week that there was a uh, kind of a spontaneous release, an unannounced release of water in Broken Bow and a lot of guys around here go to Broken Bow, Beaver's Bend, Oklahoma and apparently there the lake, Broken Bow Lake, filled up and they, they turned on the release and opened up the floodgates there and so that, that location as far as fly fishing for trout up there in uh, the Beaver's Bend Park is pretty much you, you'll get some people saying that uh, it can be done I'll say it can't be done show me prove it because uh, we're looking at flows that are beyond the pale you can't even get close so that's not true it's just a, a chamber of commerce thing that comes out when these floods happen there's a flood in 09 um, this one is apparently quite not not quite that epic, but um, nevertheless, uh, Beaver's Bend is pretty much out of commission for a little while. And uh, if anybody else wants to say anything different, feel free to let me know, and I'll be glad to uh, correct myself. The rest of the state is kind of settling in. You know, in North Texas, we have only basically summer and winter are the two seasons we have, with about a half a season of spring and half a season of fall at the most. So we're going to jump right in and have 80 degree temperatures by Monday. Uh, that should also do a lot to enhance the fishing. And we're looking at carp coming in the flats here probably in the next two weeks. So they, they have their stages and their moods and we'll report on those as we go on. But that's something to look forward to. Uh, as you move towards the coast, I still haven't heard anything other than they're catching fish on the coast. So. It's one of those things, one of those years that uh, everything lined up perfectly for the coast. Uh, what might be happening now, I haven't, I haven't been online. I've been busy working, and of course, um, that gets in the way. Work gets in the way of work. But uh, I uh, haven't been online to see anything about the coast, but you can expect a lot of fresh water that has, has hit the hill country and even flowing all the way down from here. I'm pretty sure the dams are, are, are more open just to let that water flow all the way down the system. And that means some of this water, especially in the hill country water, reaches the coast. And when that water reaches the coast, you've got a situation that's, it's, it can be good, it can be, it can be bad. It just depends on how much fresh water gets into the, into the inland waters, the salt waters, and, and, and kind of makes that water more brackish, more fresh water in there. Typically, um, it really sparks some action. And of course, during the, the right times of the year, you know, that's, that's what Texas tarpon are looking for is that mix of fresh and salt water. So that's something to think about. Um, I don't think we have a year round population of tarpon. Uh, it's fairly seasonal. We're going to find out this summer for sure. Anyway, 
that's what's going on. Let me just give you a, a couple of quick tips here. I've got a couple of speaking engagements, by the way, coming up. I think there's one in May in Tyler, and then I'm looking at one in June in uh, the Woodlands. So I'll give you more information on that as those come up, but feel free to... Uh, you know, email me if you want about speaking engagements and things like that. I'll be glad to uh, speak to your clubs. These are fly fishing clubs that I'll be speaking at about. Well, I've got so many topics. I don't know. We'll we'll find something to talk about, I'm sure. But let me tell you, give you a couple tips here. I wear, you know, since I'm a photographer, I wear sunglasses and glasses of, of kind of, of the highest order in order to protect my eyes from from our stronger sun than we had than we had when I was a kid, much stronger sun now. And one of the types that I wear is Smith Optics. Well, the tip is, if you have a lanyard on any of your glasses, you should put a lanyard on all of your glasses. I didn't have one on my Smiths the other day, and I was out scouting for this report, and um, I just took my glasses off and went like that and threw them on the ground, so they're broken. Um, Smith Optics, I hope you're not watching this. But anyway, uh, the tip is, this is why you want to be associated with a local fly shop like Tailwaters. These guys are pretty good about uh, taking your glasses back and shipping them back to the factory and, and getting it taken care of. So I'm gonna take these by Tailwaters Fly Shop in the uptown Dallas today and drop them off. If they're uh, still willing to send those in and we'll see how quick they get back to me. But this is the time of year when if you haven't invested in sunglasses there's many great reasons to wear them one is for eye protection just from errant flies two is for visibility so you can see the fish with polarized and the proper color lenses and three is the sun exposure you get when you're out fishing as much as i do or, you know a lot the sun exposure you get will, will over time, of course, uh, give you cataracts. So uh, it's just like a sun, basically your eyeballs are getting sunburned over time. So this is a great way to, you know, delay what is generally inevitable if you live long enough, cataracts. But if you wear sunglasses on all your outdoor adventures that, that block UV, you're in good shape. So that's the three things I like about spending the money I spend on, on good quality sunglasses. And those three uh, things that I mentioned are really kind of, none, none is greater than the other. All three of those are very important to me and they are things that uh, I'm willing to invest in heavily. And the next tip I have, I've, I've kind of been dragged back into the kayak thing, kind of reluctantly, kind of voluntarily, but I, I wanted to show you one thing that I made uh, or I actually conceived of and had my wife make for me, my lovely, wonderful wife. And that is a sleeve to hold, um, a very cheap and affordable way to hold kayak paddles. Most of your good kayak paddles come in half. And the problem we have is when we're done around here, almost anywhere, you're going to have mud on, your, on the end of your paddles and stuff like that. Well, my idea was to take a... Uh, a pair of $2, uh, what do they call them, hospital, hospital greens or whatever they call them, the hospital pants. And basically what I had her do is just sew the legs together and sew the end shut of the legs. And now I've got what is pretty handy and it ties off with the waist tie right here. A pretty handy paddle holder made out of pants, just some, some uh, regular medical issue pant, pants. Make sure you get them big enough that the that the paddles will actually fit in there. But it's really they, these things run so big anyway that it works really well. But so that's how I protect my paddles and keep the mud off of the inside of my car with the, my kayak paddles. That's your two tips actually: eyewear and paddle wear for your uh, kayaking this spring. Uh, make sure you stay tuned. I've got a series that I'm working on on fly fishing areas of Louisville Lake, or also known as Lake Dallas. And that first piece will be out next week, probably on Tuesday. Have some photographs and some GPS coordinates for a spot that I call a taint. It ain't Louisville and it ain't Ray Roberts. It's kind of in between, but it's a real nice creek that actually produced some fish last night. Thanks for watching.
You guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week here on Texas Flycaster. Feel free to subscribe if you like what you see, and also make sure you watch the Instagram for people send me photos from all over. Apparently, Lake Buchanan, Buchanan, Buchanan is uh, producing carp right now, and I got a photo from down there. I get photos from Houston and all over the state, and I will be glad to run your photos of fish you catch on the Instagram Texas Flycaster. So have a great weekend. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it. And we'll be glad to get it on the report.